Okay, let's continue. And I have only two questions for you. What are the things which you liked? Hopefully there are some. And what are the things which you did not like or which, which you were missing or, or so, so on? Which, who, who wants to start with, with the feedback? Yep. Uh, okay, great. Uh, our group liked that it's very clean. And so it's kind of like if you look at, you know, design or furniture or whatever, it's got a clean look. Um, the other thing that we liked was you don't get turned off right away because of dense content and that we're all living our lives at 50 miles an hour. And so we can't like dig in. And so it doesn't turn you off. You're more likely to look to the next page or the next page because you're not like immediately bogged down in text. Um, and then we also had some suggestions uh, around this box here. I'm not sure how I would identify this, but maybe something around additional resources that might not be a cost, but yeah. might be environmental or I something fully understand. along those lines. Yeah. That's exactly what we've been talking about. Great feedback. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. We also, uh, one last thing. I yeah. Sorry. But, but the only other thing I was going to say that we really liked was the fact that there was feedback from others implementing these. Yeah. That was great. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we, we, we talked about resources also, and obviously it's, it would be really very difficult to cost out these projects in a very, in a detailed way, but we were thinking maybe there would be bands of cost, that there could be no cost, low cost, and high cost projects. That might be a way in for people who wanted to experiment with the site and with the program, they might tr start with a no-cost innovation. Uh, we, we've been having a lot of discussion about that one. The, the only problem we are having is that there are many projects which, which you can do in a small, sm small scale or in a big scale. So it's not obvious, but I think that you can somehow give an overall feeling about that one. So, agree. Kenny at the end, the last table. Thanks. Uh, so we also thought that it was clean and very aesthetically pleasing. Uh, some of the parts were actually about cost as well as we were t uh, talking about since this is implementing all around the world, discussing what currency it's in yeah. and what is considered low cost in one country might not be low cost in another country. So there needs to be something very specific and easy to see when it comes to cost and just an easy conversion place. Uh, we also talked about just more context around where the innovation had come out of and where it's been implemented. So everything from like demographics of students to what is the current scale uh, and how long has it existed and how has the impact been measured? Because that's when you can really analyze whether it will fit into your school or school district or country. Uh, and then in the reviews was another place, was our third place we saw for a potential edit. And right now it has reviews where somebody's providing you like qualitative feedback and it can just be like a really quick, hey, this is what we did, this is how it went. But to also have both like lessons learned and something that you have to fill out every time that you're leaving a review so that somebody who's reading the reviews is reading more than just like a, hey, I liked it or I didn't like it. Fantastic. And that gives you a kind of like full understanding what we are planning out. Um, we were saying the same thing about lessons learned, and we thought it might be helpful too in the steps. So when you're going through the steps, have it there because I don't know. I'm the kind of person I'm not going to read the reviews if it's on your site. I believe that it works, and I want to go straight to the steps. So maybe in the steps, do this, and then here are some things to look for. So we, you know, don't do this or. This didn't work for us. Okay, one more. 
if not if not we can continue because because we are moving into an extremely interesting area when we started the whole project uh, two three years ago we were thinking is that what we want to do is that we want to be identifying great innovations and we want to be putting a lot of emphasis on packaging them in a beautiful way and I think that that's actually quite easy it, it's it's not easy it's a lot of hard work but it's doable we have a lot of we have a huge amount of great innovations and we can package them in a beautiful way and to be frank the way education innovations are packaged at the moment the competition is not too hard they look awful on most of the sites so we can do that one but then the key problem uh, we are we are finding is that actually actually the most difficult part is to make really make them spread and, and that's why I'm gonna be spending now 10, 10 minutes about the key insights we are having having at the moment and I'm more than happy to happy, happy to get your feedback in here so I if we are analyzing the process simplifying the process quite a lot first of all once we have found the innovation then we have to package it then we have to share it and then it needs to be implemented but in between there's kind of like a moment when someone has to really get it which is the receiving part and out of these these four stages we have a feeling is that this is the key moment because like mentioned there's so much information happening happening and so on so if I'm explaining you in here an innovation you might get excited but if you are after a long day in school or whatever you are going through something how do you really get the in innovation how do you really get excited how do you really buy in and so on that's the key key question and and we've been we've been having workshops with teachers in Finland abroad we've been discussing with experts we've been trying to identify problems on other industries and and this is this is sort of like where we are at the moment so in order to make any innovation spread uh, I think that it has to solve a genuine problem if it doesn't solve a problem then it won't travel and then the other part is that the teacher has to have resources to implement that one and I'm not talking only about money I'm talking about energy or passion or mental resources and so on so the teacher has to sort of like I have a problem and this innovation is solving the problem I have freedom to try this great but in most of the cases it's not this simple so when we are analyzing the innovations in Finland that spread they are exactly on this spot so teachers have a feeling is that they've been struggling with this problem for a long time and then someone comes up with a solution which is easy to implement and they love it so I'm I kind of like think at the moment is that it's almost impossible to force some innovation spread what you can do is that you can identify the innovations that have potential to spread and give them more speed meaning that this is solving a problem teachers seem to love this this has potential to spread and boom then we can back it up I'll, I'll, I'll uh, let's show one one video based on this one on from our interviews around the world more and more teachers are complaining of uh, stress and overwork for various reasons but one of these is the social demands from children and families. I suspect if we looked at other frontline workers in the public sector in uh, social work or in healthcare, we'd probably find the same thing because faster and faster economies are placing more and more families, parents and children under great pressure. And people on the front line of society have to deal with these pressures and that is one of the jobs of the teacher. So, so one of the key things in here is, is that more than forcing or pushing innovations to the schools, we really have to understand the everyday life of teacher, understand the problems, understand what is the key problem that is happening in this country at the moment, what are the innovations that can quite easily solve the problem and concent concentrate on those. And for example, here's a one innovation from Finland uh, created by two teachers and this was the passion of these two teachers. They wanted to create a new kind of self-assessment tool and they did it 
only with paper. So they didn't have anything digital, but they had kind of like their own system, which was the house of learning. So on the first grades, kids can give them their own goals, meaning that this is w these are the things which I want to be learning. These are the skills. These are the this is my character of this is the goal for my character after the first grade. Then this after second one, after third one, after fourth one, and so on. Then they were developing it for year after year after year, and slowly schools close to them started to get excited. Then we selected them to 100 because many experts thought that this is by far the most ambitious on this area. It looks handmade because it is handmade, but the passion and the know-how is there. Then one digital company started to get excited, and what they did is that they, they said that we can easily, pro, on pro bono basis, we can code this one and we can create this one into a digital service. And then, interestingly, it started to spread. And at the, at the moment, it's, it's, it's in over, the, over 50 countries, and they've been getting the first asks from, from uh, abroad, and, and so on and so on. Because it's, it's, it's a simple innovation, solving a problem created in a classroom that has poten potential to spread. And I think that we can easily help this spread. We have the capacity. And what are we doing in order to ma make this spread? Like mentioned, mentioned earlier, we, we are creating spotlights. Which, which means that we are, we are trying to identify what are the number one areas in world, in the education world, that there's a lot of demand at the moment. For example, media skills, media literacy, or empathy, or doing something with the refugee, refugees, or the problem with the, with the boys and learning or whatever. And then we try to identify what are the key problem areas in the world at the moment, and then we are concentrating on those as well, and, and, select, and creating spotlights. Uh, we, are, we are creating a lot of news based on these ones. So we're trying to spread the news onto innovations that are solving a problem that most of the teachers at the moment seem, seem to have. But instead of, in addition to this one, uh, what we are also planning to do is that when you are creating a digital service, the mantra, mantra is, 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 is that you have to be doing things that are easily scalable. And our goal is to take exactly the wrong or, or diverse route. So what we are trying to do is that we are trying to over-service everyone who is coming to our site. So let's see how long we can keep it, keep it coming. But our goal is that in fall, if any one of you is coming to our website asking for something, we will try to contact you within 24 hours. We will try to ask it, what is the key thing you are looking for, what kind of things. Then we would say is that these are the innovations that might be, might be helping you. So when, when someone comes to our site, instead of, so, instead of trying to have as little to do with her as possible, we are trying to have as much to do with We are trying to help her as much as we can. So we are sort of like trying to surprise with the quality of the service service each and everyone who is coming to the website. So our goal would be is that if, if there's a teacher from Egypt coming to our website and asking what are the best programs uh, which are fighting against bullying in school in the world, our goal is, is to contact that person within 24 hours with examples of the schools, uh, schools who are doing great things. But in addition to this one, we are launching an ambassador program and like mentioned, our goal is to have 100 ambassadors in every country of the world by the end of the year. So also we would say is that if there's an innovation, innovation from Salt Lake City or from Helsinki, and we have a feeling that this is a simple one, it has the potential, it's great, we can send an email to every country of the world saying that we really love this idea, is there a school in your country that might want to try this one and said, yeah, actually I know one school and so on. It will be slow, it will be step by step, but this is exactly what, what, what we are planning, planning to do. So in here, uh, the last thing which I wanna hear your feedback on is, is you all are, are busy in your everyday life and you all have your own ideas. So how do you see the receiving part in here? Uh, what would it take from you to implement someone else's idea? How do you, what are the biggest obstacles? For example, if there's great innovations happening in Finland and you really love the idea, what would it take from you to implement that one in your own school? That's the main question.
Okay, let, let's start with the feedback straight on. So uh, it would be, you know, contextualizing it to the culture. That's one. Secondly, you're trying to create a movement, so you have to feed into egos of different people who will take it forward, right? So that those triggers are difficult to uh, identify. We are trying to do a replication out of Colombia into India, and those are the big two big things, uh, which is the challenge. Yeah. Through the steps of how to make it happen, maybe having a link to the person who originally um, initiated this, explaining what they did so that there's a voice narrative or in videos as well, with also some sort of opportunity for um, some digital chatting or connection to ask specific questions that might not be answered through this. What, what we are planning to do is that anybody can have a direct, unless the in inventor don't, don't want to have any kind of chat. Mm -hmm. We are trying to create different kind of tools so that you can have a direct contact with, with the person created by this. Just one other piece that we, it's usually a barrier is buy-in. So how did they, um, I mean, they were the ones who created the innovation, but if you're trying to replicate it somewhere else in your school, what are some ideas for how to foster that buy-in? with your staff or community? Yeah. And you have to be able to um, adapt and adjust this because, again, as you said, from country to country, how we're held accountable in the U.S. for um, outcomes would be very different than another country. So um, as, many, um, as much detail so that if you need to adjust or adapt, you know exactly the kinds of areas that, that you would be able to do that with. But I think that this is an interesting area because with some innovations exactly like that, in, with some innovations exactly the opposite. Because, because let, let's say, for example, you all know TED or TED Seminar or TEDx, which is working pretty much in every country of the world. And one of the reasons is that you are not able to adapt or the only thing you are able to adapt is the content but the structure is exactly the same. So I think that in some cases, we should be extremely clear is that this is the way it should be. These are the areas which you can touch, and these are the areas which you should not touch. And then with some innovation say, this is one direction, but please feel free to make your own versions. So I think that we have to be quite clear on into which category does this innovation fall. Absolutely. And also what resources are absolutely necessary. So knowing that up front before you even kind of move forward. E exactly. That. So you can have sh some shortcuts, but this is not the place to have a shortcut. Okay, a few more. The last table, anything? No. Okay, in here is comment. Fantastic. So I'd uh, be very interested in what the unintended outcomes were from such a project. So for instance, we went with a one-on-one -on -one model for our kids and the unintended outcome was Love all it. around charging devices, Love something it. we didn't anticipate. That, that, that's fantastic. So, so that you're having intended and, and then underneath you're having unintended. Beautiful. Love it. Just um, to your point about adapting, if because you said that they'd be able to reach out to the original or originator of the innovation, but there's also a way if, I maybe already said this, so I apologize, others who have tried it out in other areas so that you can maybe reach out to them too to say, how did this work for you in this place? And how is it different from the original? You have one more comment though. I guess I, I wanted to add a little bit to your question. It, it occurred to me that some of the, the resistance to using the innovation is that people would rather come up with their own innovations, that people who are self-identified innovators would ask themselves, well, why should I borrow an innovation? Why shouldn't I just make up my own? So are you, are, how, how are you thinking, I'm asking you, I guess, how, how are you thinking about this idea of borrowing and sharing innovations for people who don't necessarily feel a sense of, uh, don't enter this with a desire to be part of a movement. Uh, again, 
extremely fundamental, fundamental question. And I've been an inventor or creator all my life. And I've been sort of like having my own... I, I, for example, when I created a lot of TV shows and, and, and I was trying to sell those, they were traveling to more than 30 countries and so on. But at the same time, I was also acquiring other people's concepts. And what, what were the moments when I was excited about someone else's idea? Is that it was solving a clear problem and it was, e it was well thought and easy to implement. So I think that in, in a Inventor, if it's interesting but not well packaged and, and kind of like fussy or whatever, it doesn't travel. But if, if anyone can recognize it, wow, this is a great idea, this is easy to implement, and this is solving my problem. And I think that those are the ones that will travel. And what is my gut feeling is that out of the 100, actually five or 10 <coughs> annually are the ones that will be traveling to all countries. Then maybe 20, 30 are ones which are traveling to some countries. And then 50% are things which are great ideas, but for some reason they are not traveling. But that's the way it works. And, and when you are analyzing how world changes, interestingly, the transportation was not changed with 10 ideas. It was changed with Uber. Uh, when you are thinking about hospitality, Airbnb was extremely effective. When you are th thinking about media, Facebook, Twitter or whatever, they, are, they were making the, 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 the change. So what I'm thinking is that among 100, there might be one or two ideas that might have an extremely big effect on education, but we don't know which ones. So we sort of like have feelings that, wow, this has potential, now it's solving, and it's, it's having unint unintentional outcomes as well. And then I think that that's part of the magic of, of in innovation, so you never know what works and what doesn't work. So, uh, brief question, which one of you, uh, wrapping it up, which one of you, in theory, might see yourself putting your own innovation to 100 open database in a long run? Great. Uh, which one of you might, in theory, uh, have in mind innovation that could be among the 100 best ones in the world at the moment? Wh which, which is great. Which one of you, in theory, might consider of, of being an ambassador, which is, which is meaning is that doesn't have to be a huge amount of work, but doing something helping, helping the innovation spread? Fantastic. So we are having you a we are having a contact information sheet on also on, on, on every table. So if you want to do something, if you want to be contacted and so on, please let us know. If not, absolutely no problem with that. Uh, and like mentioned, the hundred the new website will be on. Uh, I'd say in the last week of September, in the first week of October, we are making a world tour. Uh, we, are, we are starting our ambassador program. We are releasing the first hundred global and, and, and so on. So thanks for your, for your time. Thanks for your interest. Thanks for your feedback. A lot of ideas. And actually, I think that few of them will be implemented on the, on the site. So thank you so much. And you can, Kenny, Kenny will be collecting all the... All the Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Thanks for being here. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Saku Tuominen, and what I'm going to be doing here is that I'll first I, I'm going to be presenting a project that we've been doing in Finland now for three, four years, and our aim is to be global. Global, uh, and what we are doing is that we are scaling. We, we are trying to help inspiring scalable education innovations in Gatewell spread. And, and I'm going to be running a workshop, and the essence of the workshop is divided in three parts. Uh, parts and I'm going to be getting back to the, those three parts in, in a minute. But I decided that I'll start with giving you some background information about 100, about the project which, which we are doing. Uh, before that, before starting, one question. Which one of you heard my keynote today? Everyone. Is there someone who didn't hear? Okay, so, so then I'm going to be running through the basic stuff in extremely fast. Hopefully you'll, you'll get it and then we'll move on towards the workshop part. 
So, so what, we, what we are doing is that there's, there's a sort of like quite well-known common, common, everyone seems to agree in pretty much every part of the world. We, we've been visiting different kinds of events in all continents and, and we've been discussing with education experts. And, and it's difficult to find a person who thinks that our current education system is not outdated. So people kind of like agree that yes, there's great things happening, but overall complicated. Uh, and, and, and people, people are saying that schools need to change and, and so on. But, but when I'm visiting the world, there's a huge amount of examples that schools actually are changing, but the problem is that the world is changing faster. And, and if, if, if we are analyzing that, that there's a gap today, it's, it's most likely that the gap will be a lot wider in 2030, 2040, 2050. And, and that's complicated because, because, we, because it, if you're asking, thinking, what is the purpose of education? And the purpose of education is to help, help kids flourish in life no matter what happens. And if we are in an uncertain world, which is full of uncertain, uncertainty, and then our education system is lacking behind, it's gonna be, it's gonna be complicated. And we've been discussing with, for example, top ex education experts in India, and what they are saying is that already some of, the, some of the top people in India, they are leaving schools because they feel, they feel that they are, they are irrelevant. So not the worst ones, but the best ones. And they think, why, why on earth should I stay in here? Because I can get all the know-how online, I can do projects, I can be global in my thinking. So something needs to be done. And like mentioned, we've been asking this question from experts experts all over the world, and, and it's extremely difficult to find a person who, doesn't, who, who says is that there's absolutely no problem. So pretty much everyone seems to agree is that there is some kind of problem. And we, we've, been having, having a lot of, we've been doing a lot of interviews, and, and we, I can show you one example of, a, of an interview about the skills. I think by and large schools are still preparing kids for the 19th century rather than the 21st century. I think that many of the skills that we hope that kids leave us with are, are becoming quickly obsolete and uh, there aren't too many opportunities for kids to really practice the types of, of things that they're going to need to be successful in their lives. They, they can't practice those in schools and we don't do a great job of teaching them even. Um, there was a study that just came out that said that 80% of kids said that five years out of college they had pretty much had to relearn everything and that they were constantly learning new skills as the world changed. So I think skills are more of a mindset now than, than anything else. And I think uh, kids are gonna have to be and people are gonna have to be really uh, thinking about how they can continually learn, continually upskill, uh, learn new things and apply those new learnings to the work that they're doing. It's never gonna stop. But it's not, it's not that black, black and white. There are, there are a lot of bright spots all over the world where great things are happening. It's easy to say that the whole of the education system is outdated, but that, that's, not, that's, not, that's not the case because, because, for example, in Finland, there's great schools, but in India, in Singapore, in the US, and all over the world, there's great schools, there's great teachers, and so on. So it's, it's, it's kind of like dangerous to overgeneralize with, with this one. So the good news is that there's great things happening, happening all over the world, but the bad news is that no one knows about them. And it's interesting, I've been, I've been for example, I've been in Finland, I'm asking about top schools in the US, whether they are high tech high or whether they are big picture learning, whatever, and I'm asking which one of you know anything about these? No one knows, absolutely nothing. And if I would be here and I would be asking is that what are the top innovations in Singapore or in Tokyo or in India, no one would know. But, but if I would go to, and this is my guess, is that if I would go to a uh, Colorado and ask about innovations happening in Salt Lake City, my, my estimate is that no, no one really knows about the stuff. And, and that, that's the problem, and that's the mission we have. We want to make, make education more global. We want to increase the cooperation. And like, like I said in the presentation, the, the saying, and uh, whatever happens in Las Vegas stays in Las Vegas is exactly the same in education. Whatever happens in a classroom stays in a classroom. And, and that's, that's, that's a big, big problem because if we cannot solve this problem, I think that we cannot really change the education. 
But the problem with here, problem with this one is that it's, it's a wicked problem. It's extremely difficult to make educa education innovations travel in education world because whole of the education is happening in silos. And what I mean by that is that I mean is Germany is a silo, the city of area of Mannheim is a silo, the city of Mannheim is a silo, every school is a silo, and there's extremely little cooperation within the country and between countries. And this is something which we, which we want, to, want to change. And what we are doing is that we are seeking and sharing inspiring innovations in K-12. And we are not really concentrating on forcing new stuff into the schools. What we, are, what we are concentrating on is trying to identify great ideas that, that have the potential to travel. And I think that's kind of like one of the key things that, that you have to understand, because it's quite easy, easy for people, for example, from outside of the education industry to come and say that I want to change the school, I want to be pushing new stuff. And I, I can easily sympathize with teachers who, who are feeling, feeling overdrawn, meaning that yet too many new things are happening. Is it working? How do you know that it's working? And the problem with innovations is that most of them actually don't work, and that, that's complicated. And like mentioned, what we are doing is that we are selecting 100 innovations. What we are selecting, we are selecting 100 innovations globally every year. First 100 will be, will be coming out in, in the last week of September in 2017, but there's going to be a new collection in 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021. And that's the essence of what we are doing. But we are also having a specific spotlight which can be concentrating either on an area or a topic. topic. Topic can be anything from environment to school furniture design, robotics, artificial and intelligence, media literacy or whatever. Or it can be spotlight. Spotlight on Finland, spotlight on Salt Lake City, spotlight on Venezuela, spotlight on Barcelona. And, and in spotlight we are identifying 10 great innovations on that specific area or theme we are packaging those, we are making videos of those, and we are trying to help them spread. Uh, we are also having 100 open, which is a database free to use, uh, where we are having giving extreme, based on these, we are giving extremely simple template, so any of you can package your own innovation and spread it for free with the world. And we are helping you to spread, we are having a service so that, so that we are we are, we are doing everything we can to promote all the innovations that are on the website for free. And, and we are having events, we are organizing the first event in Finland, Finland, and we are having a huge amount of local events coming in 2018. And then we will have a media service which is specialized on identifying innovations and, and covering the stories of innovations that travel. So it's not only about coming up with innovations, it's also about adopting innovations, implementing innovations, and so forth. So this is, this is what, what we are doing. And, and like mentioned, we are backed by all the, all the major players in Finland, like Ministry of Education, Teachers Union, all the leading universities. We are funded by companies, companies like Nokia and Supercell. And, and as, as our global partners, we have GSV, we have IDEO, we have XQ, we have Ashoka, we have BET, who are helping, helping us in our mission. And everything is non-profit, everything is open source. Non-profit means, is, means is that we are doing everything for free, participating in 100 is for free, and, and we, are, we are sharing, uh, that this is something which is crucial to understand, we are sharing innovations which are for free, but we are also sharing innovations which have a price tag. And even, if, even in those cases, we are not getting any fee. So for example, if we find a furniture which we think that they are brilliant, we love them, we are happy to promote, for free, but it has to be accepted, it has to be liked by our, our advisory board. And today, uh, in, in the workshop, uh, we, were, we were thinking, Kenny, Kenny Simola, who is our C, uh, head, of, head of partnerships, will help me, but, but we decided that we are dividing the uh, workshop in, in three parts. The part number one is, is that I'm, I'm briefly explaining the seeking, meaning what do we mean by seeking, how do we find the innovations, and, and, and so on. Then secondly, about, we are discussing about packaging, how to package the innovations, and thirdly, sharing. And I'm going to be quite open about how, how we operate. I'm more than happy to, to ask any questions you might have, and I'm going to be giving you X amount of tasks as well. So this is, this is the uh, agenda. So let's start with the seeking. L like mentioned, uh, we, are, we are looking for, we, we decided to have a quite broad scope, because, because we think, think that if you really want to make, make a change in education, 
it doesn't happen by changing one small thing. So what we are thinking is that we are trying to identify what are the areas, what are the skills one should be teaching in schools and how. What are the new topics and how, how can you transform the teaching of literature or history or mathematics or whatever. Secondly, uh, secondly teaching, how should you change the styles of teaching, re-educate the teachers, uh, motivate the teachers. Uh, when, we, when we are saying is that we should be teaching kids uh, the skill of lifelong learning and, and we should be teaching kids the mindset, that's exactly the same for teachers as well. And, and that's, not, that's, not, that's not easy, easy. For example, digitalization can transform everything that you've learned about how, how to teach overnight. And, and it's complicated to say, say, say kids in a classroom that, that you have to be excited about the change, you have to be excited about new things if you're not excited yourself. And that's one thing which we are looking. Then assessment, how should you test? Uh, what is the best way to test? Uh, we, are, we are studying a lot of great cases globally about personal learning, but also personal assessment about new, new kind of tools, new kind of systems. Then learning environments, either physical, uh, classroom, school level, or digital, new kind of digital learning environments, but also social. Uh, how, how should you connect schools together with, the, for example, with the city or the society? And, and do you have any great examples on, on how to in, involve those? And lastly, we are also looking for leadership innovations, which is a big area as well, because none of this will happen if you don't have a great leadership on place. And, and, and we are having three criteria. Uh, the innovation has to be innovative, which means that it, it has to bring something new to the, uh, to the education circles. Impact, it has to work. And then lastly, scalability, uh, it has to have the potential to travel outside the classroom. Uh, but we might be having innovations which are first world innovations, uh, which require a lot of techniques and so on. And then if some, someone says is that you could never ever replicate this in, in developing countries, that's fine because not everything has to be, has, has to travel everywhere. But each and every innovation has to have the potential to work in another country and so forth. So when I'm asking you in a minute, uh, asking you to think about innovations, keep in mind these, these three things. Uh, is it something new? Is there something new? It, does it seem to be working, and is it scalable? Are you bucketing the innovations on your website? Like, if, if the need is communication, or, I mean, do you have broad categories? Yeah, we are, ha we are, we are going to ha be having tags. <coughs> the tags at, so, so you can be searching them based on the theme or, or, or the skill, and, and then we are having the learning outcomes and everything. So, so yes, exactly, and you can search uh, whether it's empathy or social skills or cooperation or whatever, you can be searching and, and you get the results based on those. And, and how are you measuring impact? Is that something that the, that's, the that's, actual innovation has uh, to? It, it's an interesting question because this, for example, if we are, if we are analyzing the, uh, the, the concept of impact in US and Finland, for example, it's totally different because in Finland, we are so much more loose on the, on the concept. So what, what we are looking for here is that in, uh, we are look, looking for a feel that this is working in the school. There's some kind of evidence that it's working. It, it might be different from country to country, but there has to be evidence that it seems to be working. Working and, and, and that's as far as we go. Then, then, we, then, we are, then we are trying to replicate that one in another country and then we have to get the feedback, wow, it's, it's working there as well. And, and then in optimal case, we have examples from 10 countries, 15 countries, 20 countries, and that's the evidence we are looking for. And my last question, yeah. do you have a minimum number of schools or classrooms in which the innovation has to be in? No? We, we, are, look, we are looking, there might be a, a, we are having time limit. So the, the innovation should have been implemented, it, it should have been on practice, it, it should have been tried at least for one year. Okay. But if it's only in one country, it's working brilliantly, and we have a feeling is that there's a lot of potential, we, we might be excited. So we are having innovations which are already in 50 countries, 
and so on. We are having innovations which are only in one school, but we love it and we have a feeling is that there's a lot of potential. Thank you. Okay. And, and like mentioned, in Finland, we are having at the moment 100 innovations which we, which we are testing. So we are testing the packaging, we are testing the impact, we are testing the concept, concept in Finland. And, and I, can, I, I run briefly, I, I, I sh showed a few examples there, and, and so I'm going to be skipping these, but I'll have a few more examples. But the gaming room, we have built the gaming room inside one, one Finnish school, we have selected the games, and, and so on, and we are more than happy to give you all the know-how. So if you would have a uh, school in, in Salt Lake City, for example, saying that I'd love to try it, what, what we are having is that we have, we, we have a blueprint on, on this is how it was executed, these are the games that we selected, this is the feedback from the, from the, from the kids, these are the learning outcomes, this is the contact information for the person. If you want to replicate, please do. And this is how we are approaching. Sorry? Is there support for contextualizing the replication? I'm, 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 I'm going to be getting back to all, all the details, details in, in, in a minute, if, the, if that's okay. Then we are having the world piece, and again, what we are trying to do is that we are trying, the concept is great, but we are, we are trying to help the organizers to formatize the concept, so that it's not loose, but it's sort of like saying, this is what we tried, this is, this is what worked, and this is how we see the potential is that this is how it could work in, in other, other countries as, as well. And for example, this is something which I, have, which I firmly believe is that it, it has a potential to work in many other countries. Not everywhere because not every country has the freedom to try things like that. But in many countries, I think this is something which might be extremely useful. Uh, one thing which we did in Finland, uh, the parents tonight mostly in Finland and, and in most of the other countries I've been discussing about this, that the essence of parent tonight is, is about complaining. So parents come there and they are complaining, complaining about, and mostly, mostly they are also comparing that their know-how on the schools is based on the time when they were in school themselves. So what we decided to do is that let's try to turn this whole, whole concept upside down and let's make parents excited about schools. So what we are saying is that we are, we are selecting the great examples of the schools of the future that are already happening in Finland. We made emotional videos and, and, and so on, and we, we decided is that let's organize parents' night in every school of the Finland in exactly the same time. And we tried it for the first time uh, four months ago, an early stage, but we had 350 schools doing it on exactly the same minute. We had roughly about 30,000 parents there, and the feedback was excellent. We were on the main use, and so on and so on. And we are doing, doing it again uh, in, in next November. And the basic idea in here is that there's, the minister is saying that this is, the, uh, this is the goal of the Finnish education policy. The agency is saying that these are the key challenges we are having at the moment. Then we are having schools that are doing great things, and then the school that is organizing the event it has, has the freedom to show the great things for the parents as well. So the, so the whole idea of this one is not to complain, but make parents excited about the, 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 the great things that are happening in schools. The, and the feed, feedback has been great. And again, I think that this is something that could be replicated in, in, in other countries or cities. And it doesn't have to be whole of the US, but it could be, for example, whole of the Utah at, at, the, at the same, same time. Uh, here's there's, there's a lot of these kind of like body measurement, health measurement apps. And one school in Finland, they, they chose 10 apps, different kind of, different kind of measures to, to measure your health, your blood pressure, your condition, and so on and so on. And then every kid took the tests. But then the interesting thing what they did is that they, they transformed all the data into a topic. So they are teaching physics, they are teaching biology, they are teaching mathematics based on the information of their own body. And the kids love it, it's fantastic. When they, are, they are trying to learn percentage based on their own resu results. And again, the essence in here is, is taking this know-how and try to package it, formatize it in a way that some other school can use the, use the information as well. Uh, what, what we did is that, that we, we selected three most interesting, interesting museums in Finland 
and we turned the museums into, into digital playgrounds. So we, we, we devised games or app so that kids can go there, take the teacher can or the kids can download the app, and then they have to be going around the museum playing a digital game based on the museum itself. And amazing, works beautifully. And again, this is something that, that could be could be uh, could be tried in any country of the world quite easily. The platform is there, and it's easy easy to do. But what we are trying to do is that this is how it works, and this is how it can be replicated. This this is something which I would warmly warmly, and it was amazing. We had like top celebrities in Finland giving emotional stories about one teacher, not many, one who changed his life and told the story how. And then we were showing these clips on, on, on the biggest teacher event in Finland and teachers were crying and it, it, was, it was amazingly emotional. And then we created a social media campaign with hashtags and everything, meaning that anybody can thank one teacher and they were sharing and we were number one in, on the Finnish Twitter uh, for trending. And again, something which we would love to do again and something which we, we would be more than happy to do to do in other countries as well. But how the whole concept works is that we are explaining is that this is how we did it. Uh, this, this was the whole concept. And if you want to organize something like this in your own country, please do. Only thing is that we would love to know your, about your version in order to make it spread. But I'm going to be getting back to that one. Uber for parents, um, which I explained, explained again something that could easily work work in, in some other country as well. But the basic idea in here is that there's a lot of parents in Finland uh, who would love to have a role in schools and, and so on, but, but schools want to, want to be certain is that it's relevant, it works. So what, what, what we tested is that any parent who has, who has the capacity or potential and the energy and the passion to help teachers teach, they can say, I'm an expert on coding, I'm an expert on artificial intelligence, I'm an expert on climate warming, I'm an expert on, on what, whatever area. And, th and then they can say, I'm happy to help teachers once a month, twice a month, I'm happy to help in this city only. And then any, any teacher can order them and then they can rate. So this is not only about their own kids' school, but any school in the city. And parents love it beca because it's, it's a meaningful way to do charity, teachers love it. And once there's, there's ex exactly the same kind of rating system that, that you're having in Uber, but it's perfect because if someone is getting one or two one stars or whatever, then they are eliminated and so on. And then you would al always say that, is there a risk? I don't really see a risk in, in, in Finland and we haven't been having any, any bad now. Sorry? Uh, it, it hasn't, it ha it's, not op it's not open yet but the name will be expert, expert. so it's X-P-R-T, and, 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 that's, that's, and it's, it's quite beautiful, it's simple app, and, and again, we are sharing all the know-how in fall, but it, it's already, already in practice. Then one thing which we are doing, uh, there are some, some innovations in, in US which are on the same area, but not exactly the same. So what we are doing in here with Triplet is that we are selecting three pieces of evening news, high-profile evening news, and, and then, then we are having one international news, one national news, and one human interest news. Then we, are, then we are selecting the clips, then we are providing background information regarding the clip, and then we are having ideas on how to use the clip in different grades. And, and we are sending this for free to any Finnish teacher to their mobile phone in the morning. So, eight o'clock when they go, and for example, if there's a Trump election, if there's a French election, if there's an earthquake or whatever, every teacher in Finland know, know is that I'm getting the clip, I'm getting the background information, I'm getting the ideas, and I'm free to use the information in my classroom. So the essence in here is overnight. The essence is that it's exactly the same news that we're there, and, and then they can device tasks based on this one. And at the moment we have roughly about 10% of the Finnish teachers using this weekly. And they love it and it's done together with the big national broadcasting company of Finland and for free. And so on. And like mentioned, there's, there's ideas, we have huge amount of ideas and we are packaging, the, packaging all of these even though this is not the essence. Our essence is, is going to be the global innovations. So what we are doing is that we are seeking 
we are analyzing, we are selecting, we are packaging, we are sharing, we are co-developing. Co-developing and, and at the moment we are having on, like mentioned, the Finnish, Finnish project has been pilot project. So we've been testing, but the essence is global innovations. And at the moment we are having 120, we are having innovations from 127 countries. Countries, we have roughly about 500 innovations that we have identified, that we have test, we have interviewed, we've been doing testi, testing and, and so on. And I'm going to be getting back to our categories, categories in a minute. So this is sort of like, this is uh, classified information, but showing you how we are approaching. So we are looking for innovations from north, from south, from rich countries, to developing countries, from big schools, from small schools. And, and what we are having, we are having areas like architecture, arts, biology, chemistry, we are having environment, advisory, after school, apps, classroom management, flipped classroom, growth mindset, mixed A's, gender equity, food, uh, equity, dropout prevention, and so on. So we are saying is that we are trying to find great innovations globally in all these categories. And, and we are not obsessed, obsessed so that there has to be one from each. But we are trying to keep the balance. So all the time we are having sort of like feeling is that it has to be wide. It has to be balanced. We have to have digital. We have to have, to have analog. We have to have something which is quite over the top. Then something which is extremely easy to replicate and so forth. So it's all about finding a, a relevant balance without losing, losing the ambition. And this is difficult for you to see, but, but we are also tracking countries. So we are, having, we are having four from Argentina, we are having Armenia, one from Armenia, we are having 15 from Austria, we are having one from Bhutan, we are having one from Bolivia, we are having two from Bosnia-Herzegovina, and so forth. And, and we are trying to sort of like say, that, like mentioned, all the continents have to be there, different kind of countries, and the database is filling, filling, filling all, all the time. So this is how we are approaching. And, and again here is that we are, we are having, uh, looking for visual arts and so on. And, and, and this is something which is not out yet. Uh, our goal is to lo launch this one in, in, in September. But the essence is that we, we want to create something which is high profile, which is ambitious, which is well researched, but at the same time beautiful because I think that that's exactly what teachers deserve. They, it has to be easy, to use, user experience has to be nice, it has to be beautiful, it has to be emotional. So what we are looking for is that this is something that is updating all the time in real time, and we are having, so you can, you can be zooming, you can be looking for, for innovations on, on all of these areas. Once you put your mouse, mouse over any dot, you get more information, you can see the countries where it's spreading, and so forth. And, and, and we will be having, we are packaging all the innovations and I'm, I'm gonna be getting back to the packaging side, side in a minute. And, and like mentioned, our goal is to be an extremely easy to use database for education innovation. But I think that here's one thing, you could easily say, how on earth will you compete with Google? And our goal is that we won't, we, we won't be competing with Google but what is our essence is, is the packaging side. So it's created and packaged. Because if you go to Google and you are writing, for example, against bullying or whatever, there's gonna be a huge amount of stuff, but it's, it's not really packaged. It's difficult to understand what is there. And we've been going, and, and many people have been saying that there's a lot of databases already about innovations. And there are, and, and all of them, all, almost all of them are great because the content in them is great. But if you really try to understand what is the essence of innovation, how do you replicate that one, what are the, they are complicated. There's, there's, in some of them there's extremely limited amount of information, in some of them there's huge amount of information. And we are trying to find a delicate balance. And we've been having huge amount of workshops with teachers discussing about what is too much, what is not, what, what is not enough, how do, what, what, what information is relevant for you, what is too superficial. So, Let's start with the first, first task. Uh, I'll give you like 10, 10 minutes. So based on this, scalability, impact, inno innovativeness, and so on, uh, discuss, is there an innovation in your school, in your area, that deserves to be spread? Something that you like, some, some way where you have a feeling that actually I think that this is something that could work all over the, all over the US, 
or in Finland or in, in, in some other country. It doesn't have to be something which is totally out of the box. It can be big, it can be small, it can be something that you've been using in your area for many times, but still not many people know about it and so on. So, so at first, share about innovations that could have the potential to travel and then select one. Select one of those and then share it. Understood? Great, start. Okay, let's start. Um, Kenny, Kenny will be bringing you the mic. So why don't you raise up your hand if, if you have an innovation in your table that you are willing to share? Great. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Wayne Beavis. I'm the principal of Limbloom Math and Science Academy in Chicago, Illinois. Um, so at Limbloom, what we have, we have a couple different uh, weird things out there, but um, one of the things I'm most proud of is our writing center. Um, and so we looked at the collegiate level in terms of what their writing centers look like for undergrad support around writing and r developing those skills. And so our librarian uh, actively recruits some of our top English students and then we schedule them into the library every period of the day. And so she trains them to be basically graduate assistants to help their peers around tutoring on grammar reviews, how to write papers, how to write personal narratives for their college applications. Um, and then the students can use Google Forms to sign up for appointments with them. Um, or teachers can sign up and actually have them come into the class to be extra eyes um, to go through students' drafts. Um, and they're available after school and before school for the students if they want to get that extra feedback as well or support if they need it. Great. Excellent. Someone else? Hi, I'm uh, Ragini from India. Uh, I work for Grey Matter Capital. We are an impact funder in education. So uh, we came across a very interesting innovation in an affordable private school segment. So when I say affordable in India, it means annual fee of less than $300. So that's the segment we are talking about. And the biggest challenge there is of getting good learning outcomes because the quality of teachers is compromised because the school cannot afford that kind of facilities and teachers. So there's this school called Muni School in Delhi, which is in um, uh, uh, the national capital region, where they have perfected a model of peer-to-peer -peer learning among students for all subjects, including different languages. And their learning outcomes are, are much better or at par with the very good private schools in Delhi. So, you know, they just get one teacher, which then trains few students who then continue to train other students. So it's a great cost-effective innovation. Fantastic. Brief opinion, Paul. Which one of you would be excited to learn more about this system? And that, that's exact, exactly what we are talking about. Here, here was the next one. Actually, Ragini and I come from the same organization. It was about that school. So let me give you an example, right? Uh, there aren't any teachers and you want to teach a language. So how do you go about doing it? You give a kid a dictionary, uh, which is translation between a mother tongue and English. And you write a couple of sentences in your own, you know, uh, mother tongue, and tell the kid to kind of translate, taking the dictionary. And the kid will write down the words in translation, and then again translate back. And then he'll figure out that the subject-object verb is not really making sense. So that way, he, he or she is learning the grammar. And then when you do this iteration process a couple of times, you know, with different sentences, you have got the basic verbs, you've got the basic nouns and pronouns, and you're on your way to learn a particular language. They speak about, the school has an opportunity to learn about four or five languages, Japanese being one of them, uh, which is pretty amazing because in India, some of the top schools don't uh, teach Japanese. By the way, there's an interesting insight with it's, it's an obvious insight, but still interesting insight that, that we've been getting in Finland. 
when we've been studying, for example, innovations coming from developing countries in poor areas of Africa, for example, and th there's a lot of talking is that in Finland, because we have a great education system, we should be exporting know-how to Africa, which is up to a certain extent true. But once you really start to deep, dig deep, deep into these innovations, I'd say that most of them would work perfectly in Finland. And that's something which, which is lacking, sort of like the two-way two -way road. And I, both examples that you were describing would be working in Finland as well. So at our school, we have um, some strong community partnerships that we think are pretty innovative. Uh, we just launched a partnership, or extended one, through UCSD, University of California at San Diego, where we'll offer on-site undergraduate courses on our campus with UCSD professors, um, free to our scholars. In addition to that, um, we also share professors through the UC Extension program. We've offered a certification program um, in programming, so our scholars take uh, virtual reality, gaming, and then programming, C, C++, and then Java, and it leads them to a high school certification using the UCSD Extension um, uh, professors, and that's free to us. Also, the medical school at UCSD, they come out and they do a needs assessment with our scholars and they ask them, what are some of the needs in terms of your community and health? Because they're taking a course called Health in the Community and one of their requirements is to work with the high school. So they come to our school, do a needs assessment with our scholars, our scholars tell them what are some of the needs, they design a curriculum, and then they come back and they implement it in our school with our scholars. Then they also have an opportunity to travel internationally and nationally, locally, to do study under UCSD researchers. And it's a real strong partnership with UCSD in the hopes that we'll be able to send scholars there um, to study and ultimately then on to the medical school. We have another partnership with San Diego State University where we've become a Confucius classroom. We offer two languages, Spanish and Mandarin. And San Diego State um, sends us four Mandarin instructors and we only pay for the visa. And they're native speakers. They also teach language and culture um, in, in, uh, in our campus. And then our scholars have the opportunity to travel to China um, as a part of our affiliation with the Confucius Institute. And we only pay for the visa for that. And so it really helps our budget. And it's a strong partnership that we have. Fantastic. How, how would one question, which is a difficult question, how, how would you see uh, that concept traveling to another country? For example, what would he, what would be your recommendation? What are the essential parts that one could be using in Finland or in in Sweden or in Japan or whatever? How, how would you? What would be your recommendation? To develop those partnerships with the um, higher ed institutions in Finland. Yeah. And to show the model and show what can be done and then sit down and tell them that it's, it's possible in other countries. I understand totally. Let, let's have one more. Oh. Let's start here. Hi, everyone. My name is James Watson. Uh, I want to say hi to the Grey Matters Capital folk. You guys are actually my neighbors in Atlanta. Um, yeah, this is great, really cool. So uh, I uh, helped found a community-engaged learning micro school, which means we have around 80 students. Um, and our innovation is based around um, kind of major projects with community partners. Uh, and we have kind of a whole curriculum. So our innovation is not just one innovation. It's sort of the flow of the, the day and the four-year curriculum at the school. So every day, the students spend part of the day working on, in traditional academic classes. Um, some of them are project-based, as you would think of project-based learning. And then part of the day is what we call project-based learning, which is really community-engaged learning. And that's, um, that gets them outside of the classroom with different community partners. We have about 300 people that we've worked with over the last few years um, on major projects that will last two months, three months a semester. So that could be um, building a tiny house or helping a group of artisans import their products from Guatemala or um, uh, redesigning historical markers. The largest, um, the home of the largest slave auction house in Atlanta is actually now just a martyr, like a metro rail station, and there's nothing that's commemorated it. So our students actually have been putting in like guerrilla historical markers there. Um, so every day they work on 
major projects with community partners and the community partners are actually hired so if we're doing a like a the students are looking at water quality building a network of citizen science uh, youth water quality testers we'll actually hire a water quality professional to work with our science faculty to run the project um, the day ends with one of a, you know a dozen different pra again practitioner-led programs like drone design at a maker space um, public art with a local public artist, civil rights law with a civil rights lawyer, um, the, the weekends with a major speaker series, and all of our arts programs are also practitioner-led. So we have a partnership with a local theater, um, and the director of the theater runs the, um, the, the drama program. We also have a partnership with a filmmaking company, and a couple of filmmakers run our filmmaking program. So kind of our, our main metric is just bringing the kids in front of real people doing real work, and um, kind of working on projects that are meaningful, that inspire them, um, and that are exhibited to the public. So we have exhibitions every year. So it, it's, a, it's not one innovation, I guess, it's a, the whole curriculum. Um, junior year, every kid goes through an entrepreneurship program. Senior year, they all do internships as part of their academic study during the week. Okay. Let, let, let's con thank you. Let, let, let's continue continue with with the second part packaging so that we are not running out of out of time, uh, because this is again showing showing quite clearly. Even though all the presentation, all the pitches were great, this is showing the problem is that yet yeah, I'm kind of like excited about the idea, but I'm having difficulties on understanding the, the essence. Of, what is the essence of this one? Because many of the teachers they are great in teaching as they should be but they are not the best possible persons in packaging, telling about their own innovations. And, and that's, that's, that's something that we've been working with hundreds of teachers in Finland, trying to say, that, what is the idea? And then, then I've been, we've been challenging them, saying, yeah, not clear enough. What is the essence of your innovation? What is the thing that you have to replicate? How can you improve that one? And, and based on this, uh, I'll, I'll explain you where we are at the moment with our packaging process. Uh, so, so I'm con concentrating on packaging and sharing now. And, and you have the first, the, the text in here, so don't pay attention on the text. So it, the text is only placeholder. But what is, what is it that where we are at the moment? We've been doing a lot of usability tests with teachers. We are doing A and B testing. So what we, where we are at the moment is that, first of all, we all want to start with a question. So what is the problem? What is the challenge? this innovation is solving. Then, then we are having, beneath the, the headline, we are having tags, so that, that you can be tax, so that you, you can be searching based on these, all, all the insights, depending on what you are excited. And then we, we try to, if possible, personalize each and every innovation, so that there's a teacher or person who is running that one, so that you know where the innovation is, is coming from. Under, underneath, we are having an extremely simple, well-written introduction, meaning this is the essence of the innovation. Then we are having, uh, what is the cost? Is it expensive? And, and what, what, what are the resources needed in order to set this up? And what is the age group? Then the teacher or the developer of the innovation is defining what are the desired learning objectives uh, or, uh, or outcomes that that is goal. And then people who are testing this one can say that, yes, this is exactly how it's working in my classroom as, as well. And then we are having comments from the environment. Uh, we are having uh, anybody who is testing the innovation can be sending their own know-how, meaning that we really love this one, this is how it worked. In this area, we were having, having, having uh, compli complications. Then we are having a, a, any, anybody who is testing it, the person who, whose innovation that is, can be sending photographs and videos and information, but also everyone who are testing it can be sending as well, so that you can see that this was the innovation coming from India, this is how it looks like in Bhutan, this is how it looks like in other countries, countries as well. Then we are having extremely simple steps on implementing. This is how you should start, this is step number one, this is step number two, step number three, and, and, and so forth. Then we have a Q&A where anybody can be asking details, meaning that I didn't really understand this one. And, and you can be asking questions either from the inventor or from the community, and then they can be give, giving ideas. 
And then you are having a extremely clear contact information, meaning if you want to be asking anything, if you want to be reading, reading, uh, this is where, where to read. And what is our goal is that all, of all of these hundred innovations and all the spotlights, we are doing the packaging. We are responsible for how they look, how they are written, so that it's, everything is beautiful. But on 100 Open, this is exactly the same template that anybody can be using. And then we are sort of like trying to give models that this is how we see it, this is a good introduction, this is a good headline, but you cannot kind of like, you cannot mess it up. So, so that this is, this is the problem, right here the problem this is solving, right here the headline. This is the introduction. If you want to have a video, this is the place to download. So we try to make it extremely easy and simple to use. But it's been a delicate balance between Finnish teachers trying to define what is too much, what is not enough, and, and how to make it beautiful, how to make it simple. So uh, the other, other one here is about kind of like the first layouts of the front page, but the one which is about the innovation, concentrate on that one and, and sort of like try to not, don't pay attention on the te text or because they are placeholders, but on the basic concept, do you get it? Is there something lacking? Is there something too much? What is it that you would love to have in order to be able to implement this one? So go through the designs and then talk through th th that one based on your own innovation, meaning is that the one, one you were pitching is that how could you use this template? Is there something lacking? Could you simplify it in, in, in a meaningful way and so on? So go through and let's hear your feedback in a minute.